In oxidation-reduction chemistry, oxidations and reductions always occur in pairs. If you're going to be oxidized, that is, you're going to give up some electrons, those electrons have to have a place to land. They have to reduce some other compound. So let's look at a redox reaction and break it up into half cells and determine the oxidation and reduction pairs and use our tables of standard reduction potentials to help us balance that reaction. So here's just an unbalanced chemical reaction, the permanganate ion and the bromide ion reacting to form the liquid bromine and the, the manganese ion in solution. This is obviously unbalanced, but what's happening? The permanganate is being reduced to the manganese ion, and the bromide ion is being oxidized to the liquid bromine. So let's look at those two half cells. We can go back to our table. Here's our table of standard reduction potentials, and we can pick out, here's the permanganate half cell, and here's the bromine half cell. So we can use those two, one as a reduction and one as an oxidation, to balance our chemical reaction. So let's write them both down. Here's the permanganate, and here's the bromine, both written as a reduction at this point. And we notice, well, first, the number of electrons is different. This is a five electron transfer, and this is a two electron transfer. So we can balance the number of electrons. Whenever oxidation and reduction occurs, of course the number of electrons are conserved. If I, if I reduce you by two electrons, I must accept those two electrons. So here I'm going to multiply the top by two to get to a 10 electron transfer and the bottom by five, so I have 10 electron transfers in both cases. Now when I multiply through, I can reverse the bromine half cell so that I have one reduction and one oxidation, that is, the electrons cancel, and then sum the reaction. So the sum of these two now with the appropriate stoichiometric coefficients are two of the permanganate and 16 H3O plus, 10 bromide ions, and that produces five moles of the bromine liquid and two moles of the manganese ion and 24 moles of water. Now, we can also calculate the relative cell potential for that. We can go back to our table, and when we do, we see that the permanganate reduction has a standard voltage of 1.49, the bromine a standard of 1.06. So the difference between those two is the overall cell potential for our chemical reaction. So that overall cell potential, 0 0.43. Now, notice again, I didn't multiply my cell potentials, my standard reduction potentials, by 2 and 5. That's because cell potential is an intensive property. It's independent of the extent of the system. I get a cell potential here, and I notice that that is a reducer transferring electrons to an oxidizer. That's downhill in free energy, and the relationship between the free energy and the cell potential is the standard state free energy is equal to minus n, the number of electrons in the transfer, in this case we saw that it was a 10 electron transfer, times Faraday's constant, the charge on a mole of electrons, times that standard uh, cell potential. So we can use our half cells and our tables of standard reduction potentials to balance chemical reactions and calculate not only cell potentials, but free energies for chemical reactions.